back folks. Today we're going to talk about Solo. And if you guys have followed this movie since the production began, you know that it went through production hell. And at one point we didn't know if this movie was even going to happen. Uh, because basically what happened, the original directors came in, wrote the movie, shot the movie, and I think they were about a week away from wrap um, when the studio saw it and said, nope, we're not doing this. The directors bowed out, the studio agreed with it, and they brought in Ron Howard to try and fix this. So the question is, was he able to fix it? <laughs> So, um, this is where we're at with this movie, right? So, I, I, I've had a minute to think about it, to really uh, just take it in and just uh, th uh, really give thought to what I saw, and I saw it last night. Um, so, I'll tell you this much so far. I'm not going to give away anything at all. Um, so, let's just go ahead and, and, and just dig right into this, right? So... Uh, the beginning of this movie is rough. It is really, really rough. To the point where I thought we were going to see a train wreck here. Um, I mean, it, it's it's tough. It's very painful, the first 25 to 30 minutes of this movie. They're very, very painful. Um, you We get quickly introduced to, to uh, our, our main character, Han Solo. Um, and Amelia Clark's character as well. And they're, you know, they're on a planet trying to get out, get off of it. But it never, here, here's my problem with this. If you're a Star Wars fan like I am, there are certain things that feel Star Wars. It's very hard to explain it uh, to anyone that is not uh, a fan um, of it. So, you know, when you hear that term, you, uh, it doesn't feel Star Wars. It's really hard to explain. So, I'm just going to say that. It, 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 there's certain atmospheres and the way the characters interact with each other and things like that it just has a star wars feel to it so the first 30 minutes of this movie didn't have that it was really weird i didn't understand what the hell was going on um the characters never felt to mesh together i didn't know if this is part of ron howard's cut or if this was some of the original cut because it didn't feel like the rest of the movie felt which is really interesting uh, so, you know, we follow Han along for a ride for a little bit, and then eventually uh, he runs into Chewie, and that's when the movie starts to really get going. You really start to see the chemistry come together at that point. From all the way from there forward, it really starts to feel like Star Wars. You see some sets that are reminiscent of the old Star Wars films. You see some imagery that is extremely reminiscent of the original Star Wars films. There's references that get dropped all over the place throughout the course of this film that are nostalgic in that manner that immediately, if you're a Star Wars fan, you know exactly what they're talking about. So, from that perspective, that's when the movie really starts to get going. What was my favorite part of this movie? By far, the second Donald Glover shows up on film, it's his movie. I'm not kidding. He is absolutely amazing, and he steals this movie from everyone else in this movie that is doing a pretty damn decent job. It becomes Lando's movie. It's amazing. What I, I can't really think of another actor that was able to channel the essence of a, of a previous character as well as Donald Glover does in this movie with Lando Calrissian. The minute you hear him, I heard him speak because they, 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 they uh, with no spoilers, they, you hear him speak before you see him. It's really interesting. Now, the reason why I say that is because when I heard him speak, I thought they were using an audio track from Billy D. Williams. They were not. It's Donald Glover who has somehow channeled Billy D. Williams and brought him to life again. So much so that there are minutes and there are instances in this film that I completely forget that's not Billy Dee Williams. It's really, it's, it's really something to watch. It's really, really amazing. And, uh, I mean, you see a lot of these characters do things that you've never really seen them do before. Chewie is extremely involved in this movie. Lando is amazing 
in just about everything he does. And, uh, and Hans Hall's character as well is charming. That's kind of his, his niche. It's, it's, he's great, he's fantastic. Um, and it, you see, it's really interesting. I, I really got, got to give a lot of credit to the, to the actors in this movie as to the little things that they decided to take away from, you know, like Harrison Ford or Billy Dee Williams um, or Peter Mayhew as well. It's really interesting to see what those little nit, nit bits that they take away. Like, for instance, Han Solo, he, when he gets his blaster and he fires it, he poses the same way Harrison Ford does when he, when he uses his blaster. It's really interesting. And uh, you see a lot of mannerisms that he's channeling as well. And I'm speaking uh, to, to Han Solo's character here. Um, it's, uh, it's really good. I mean, I, I, I was kind of hesitant if he was going to be able to pull off Harrison Ford. And it, it's not as good as what, what the Donald Glover does, but it's still good. Uh, I thought I, I thought it was really inter it was really entertaining. So, <clears throat> you know, and then, uh, like I said before, there's a lot of uh, uh, nostalgia in it, and I'm not gonna lie, there's one scene that I almost totally geeked out in the theater because uh, so, uh, I didn't I wasn't expecting it. it. Happens towards the end of the film, and I and it kind it kind of caught me off guard. And as the movie goes along, it gets better and better and better and better all the way through, and then. You know, towards the end, it, 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 you're immersed in Star Wars uh, by then, so it really comes together uh, as it goes along much, much better than how it started. Um, and like I said, I, I almost lost control for a minute in the theater because I was not expecting that, and um, I, I totally geeked out. So my bad. I'm sorry if I, if I bothered anybody in the theater. My bad. Uh, I was not expecting that. I... That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to spoil it. Nope. Not going to spoil it. Nope. So I'm going to give it, I'm going to leave it at that. All right, guys. Um, uh, Ron Howard, kudos to you. I, I, I wasn't sure if you were going to pull it off, but you did. So kudos and uh, way to slip in the uh, Clint Howard uh, cameo in there as well. If there's somebody that looks like he belongs in the Star Wars universe, it's Clint Howard. Um, but I'm going to give you my final rating, guys, for this movie. Uh, so I had to think about this for a minute. Again, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. This movie had some issues. It fixes them as it goes along. So, I'm going to give it a B B+. It was really entertaining to me. Um, the references are just amazing. I, I love Star Wars references in, in, in any film. So, uh, this, ton, this, this movie has a ton of them. There's a lot of stuff that's going on in this movie. And the references are just being dropped all over the place. So... Donald Glover, my favorite part of this movie by far. It's He is just amazing. I know there's rumors of a, of a Lando movie. Hell yeah, if he is playing Lando, give him a movie. I would watch two hours of this man play cards as Lando Calrissian. He's that damn good. I'm not lying. So, as usual, guys, don't forget to click like, share, and subscribe. And thank you for watching.